my favorite ways to color grade is using a gradient map. All right, now if you haven't done it before, understand that it could be great for the final look that you want and it could be the basis of something nice. But let's kind of explain the basics of how to use a gradient map. So let's start with a, a simple shot here. Not a whole lot of color to it, kind of monochromatic apart from skin tone. So let's get out a gradient map. Okay, that's an adjustment layer. There we go. Now, when you first open up a gradient map, it could be at any setting, depending on what you were doing before. It depends on the, on the color settings that you have here, you know, your foreground and background. Don't worry about what shows up initially, okay? What you do is on the properties palette, you open up the gradient itself. Now I have a bunch of presets here and then you know, I make a bunch of them. I sell a bunch of them on MBP and that's lovely. But making your own is actually really, really easy. Now we have to know is that gradient maps from left to right are gonna be from the darkest point to the lightest point, remapping the color, right? So you can come in here and choose like a dark color, presumably. On the right side, you might put a bright color. Now we have obviously a black and white version of the image but it can get more interesting. Let's decide on a color grade, for example. Let's say I'm gonna leave the black alone, but on the deeper colors here, and then, you know, the deeper luminosity range, I'm gonna choose like a purple, something like this. And then the mid range, I'm gonna find me a skin tone that maybe sort of matches hers a little bit, something like so, a little bit more pink, I think. There we go. And I'm gonna move it to the right. I'm just getting a basic idea of where I want the grade to be. Now you might think, well, I've recolored it completely. Yeah, well, see, that's where blend modes come in. We have all kinds to pick from. Generally speaking, I will choose soft light first and see what happens. See that? It kind of, the purple does, it's not as strong anymore. It's not as obvious like it would be on normal. You see the obvious banding of the purple. Soft light does a great, a uh, beautiful sort of blend, a tonal contrast. Now, when you do this, of course, speaking of contrast, we've added a lot of contrast, but there's ways to modify that while you work, right? So for example, you can put, oh, let's say a curves. I'm gonna put it on luminosity blending mode so it doesn't affect anything. You know, below it doesn't affect the colors too much. Option or alt click down to clip it. And now I can brighten the gradient up and down and just kind of brighten it up a little bit from that to that. And of course, opacity great friend of yours. So you can make it 60%, for example, there. Now I went from this to this. And then while it's in this mode, you can also experiment changing things out. Maybe that purple wasn't for you. Let's make it a little more blue, maybe green. Why not? Let's try green. And on this color, we're going to move it over a little bit. And I'm going to add the green a little bit more into the mids. And I'm going to leave that there. Okay, cool. Something like that. Let's make that a 75%. You see how we went from sort of out of camera looking a little bit of you know color correction, of course, in Capture One, nice clean skin edit. And then we have like a, you know, greenish, tannish kind of vibe happening here. And this is just the beginning. This is just one thing that we can do, right? So let's move on to another image. Let's go with something like this. Now, another option we can do when we have a gradient map, let's create another one real quick. Again, you do not have to do this black to white with colors in between. You can experiment with any amounts of colors, okay? But I'm gonna try to just build something here that I think could be interesting, potentially. Something like this. Again, you can experiment with this literally as much as you want to get anything. You can experiment with the node positions and the spacer in between, so how it spreads out more this way or more this way. It's a good idea to see where the colors are landing, especially on the shape of her you know, abdomen here and her face, kind of see where the colors are landing. Now, another option you can do blend modes, okay, is hue and color. Now, they're gonna be really, really strong for the most part. Hue does not account for the existing saturation underneath. Color does, okay? So you have to consider, or actually it's the other way around. Hue does account for the saturation underneath and color does not. So here it's like replacing everything. So if you choose color or hue, you have to use a better blended gradient and a smaller opacity. So here's like a 40% right there, right? Uh, the, the banding is a little bit strong. So I'm probably gonna wanna blend that a little bit better just so it won't be quite as strong on her face and maybe make it 35%. So I went from this to that very subtle purple toning, but I can choose exactly where I want that purple and yellow to land, right? Let's put it back to 100% for a moment. Another really great um, blend mode you can use is hard mix. Wait, hard mix is interesting because it's one of the eight blend modes that you can use fill on instead of opacity. See, if you use opacity, it just doesn't get any better, right? So, but if you use fill, here's like a 10% fill, it changes the, the sort of the properties of it. So it's getting you that blend. It's usually pretty strong. So even like a 30% fill starts to get really strong, but like a 
with hard mix, you get a very strong tonal contrast and it just, the colors that you've picked are more subtle. They're a little more subdued um, and blended in, but you get a lot of tonal contrast, right? So if I were to come in here and really make some radical changes, let's make it like a, like a blue. Look at that light blue with that purple. It looks really cool. Let's make that actually more of a red. There we go. See that? beautiful tonal contrast that it came in and if it gets really dark and it's too dark on top there's a million things you can do like i said uh you can go to curves but i'm going to show you a different option now go to levels i'm going to put it on luminosity blending mode i'm going to clip it down and then i'm going to take the output levels and soften them see that just kind of soften them see that now you can take the opacity if you really want to once you get the fill looking right with hard mix you can take the opacity down soften things up if you need to look at that from this to that very subtly we'll put it back to 100 very subtly evoking this color scheme you can see the highlights a little bit sort of cyan you can see the purple in her hair but it's very very subtle if you don't like any of that you can put everything back to 100 percent on hard mix and we can go to like overlay and then choose like a 40 percent little bit of a different feel see that you don't like the way the colors are landing or rather the the different luminosity range or where the colors are hitting you can play around with it until you get something like i'm using four nodes you can use more i don't know why but i can add a neon green one in here for some reason if i wanted to you can also remove the top one and just make it all neon green if that's a direction you want to try uh the, the black back end the black side does not have to be black it can literally be any color so i'm going to make that like i don't know like a lighter bluish thing okay so now now this is getting a little bit experimental right now this look a little bit different let's turn off the levels okay it's a little bit strong with the fill on 40 percent. let's make it 100 and we'll make the opacity 30. levels i won't leave the levels i like the softening see that again we're taking that now we can take it like a 25 percent if we want and we can put it on soft light let's go to 40 percent. you see how i'm playing with this but i choose a, a gradient that i like and I can sort of begin to grade on it. Let's, let's continue. How about something like this? This is a lot of different opportunities for color, right? So let's go to gradient map again. And this time, let's use some presets. You can save your own. Okay. But if, for example, if you went to the legacy ones, the ones that come with Photoshop, these are the ones that everybody gets. You can try these if you really, really want. Here's violet and orange. Okay. Change that to like soft light. There's a violet and orange. We can make that like a 50%. It's Got the right color tone, but it's a little bit on the dark side. Here again, curves. I like to put on luminosity blending mode. You don't really have to. It's just a habit. And then you can brighten up the color grade. See that? Boom, boom. And we can even make that a little stronger from that to that. Once you have it again, the blend mode that you like, you can experiment with the colors. If the purple's too purple, you can make it pinker. And if this orange is too orange, I'm just making stuff, guys, here. Making stuff up, making more yellow. You can even make it more subtle yellow play around until you get a yellow that works for you something like that i don't know see you never know what kind of cool grades you can come up with just by playing with different you know color schemes in these gradient maps okay now another thing too with gradient map color grading is that you can layer them so for example if you came here and chose i'm going to go to legacy because you guys will have these as opposed to all my custom ones um so you can play with them these metals are not as useful uh noise no neutral density no let's just go to the legacy ones let's put this blue yellow it looks really cool right so we can make it like a soft light make it like a 20 percent and then we can take another gradient map on top this one's going to be a little bit more experimental on my part i'm going to choose some light colors maybe something like this and this is going to be a little bit more in the orange range spread it out a bit no, let's put it back this way. There we go. And then we're going to put that on, I don't know, soft light, hue, color, overlay. Let's put it on soft light, make it like 40%, maybe 30. So it went from this look to that look. And we're just experimenting again. This one has a rainbow kind of thing. It kind of creates a tonality that sends you in a direction. And then you create another one on top if you really, really want. You don't even have to create another gradient map. You can throw, I don't know, a selective color on there and get to toning manually you know if you really really want to that's all a little bit strong but once you get a color grade that you kind of like then you can master it on top so that's another thing too when you grade with these type of tools like gradient maps they'll give you a false positive that things are getting too dark you can always put something on top to master it to make it look a little bit easier for you so I went from this sort of out of camera looking to an interesting grade 
maybe it's not an interesting grade. I don't know. I'm just experimenting. I don't think I have another shot open. But anyway, play around with that. And don't forget, when you're using gradient map, um, presets are great. You can save your own. Um, I'm going to throw one out here for a minute. How about uh, this one? Okay, you can make this one, like I said, hard mix. And then like a 20%, how about a 10% hard mix? Look how intense that gets. And if you really want on top, levels again. You don't have to clip it down. You can just master it. So there you go. I'm going to soften everything. And I'm going to brighten it as well. See that? So I went from this vibe to this vibe, bringing in a strange color harmony there using hard mix. I don't know. And if I didn't want that, okay, hard mix is a little strong. Uh, you can play with any of these. Hue can be cool. Color can be cool. But again, if you use these, you have to be a little bit more subtle with the banding. Make sure that you don't get crazy bands. So, so maybe something like this. There it is. Turn that off. There it is with like a 25% on color. You see how we evoke a vibe on that? And again, play with anything else on top. So if I came here to hot shadows, I can add blues, maybe not that much, and cyans, and then I can turn on my compressor on top, etc. There you go. Look at that. From this to that. Very subtle, but still an interesting color grade. So play around with gradient maps on that. You can really, really have a lot of fun. And I do mean play around because once you start color grading with gradient maps you might enjoy subtle and you might enjoy really really strong but using a gradient map wakes up an image and if you have an image that's really soft and low contrast and you really want to give it some some pop i hate that term but you really want to give it something strong gradient map color grading is the perfect way to either get the exact color that you want or to get started and you can continue with other layers so this is why gradient map color grading at least the beginning of my color grading process has been one of my favorite things for gosh eight years now or something like that i really really love it i recommend you try it uh, and see if it works for you